to worship with Lord of Light Lutheran Church and a Lutheran campus ministry at the University of Michigan. Today is Reconciling in Christ Sunday. Um, it is a Sunday on which we celebrate with 930 other congregations across our denomination um, that we have declared that we are affirming of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and moreover, this year, we are specifically highlighting a commitment to dismantle systems of white supremacy and work for justice for all people. I hope you have bread and a fist of drink available because we will be celebrating communion later on in this service. Thank you so much for joining us. In the name of the Creator, and of the Redeemer, and of the Holy Spirit, whom we invite into this space. Amen. As a church, we believe all are welcome. Let us name the ways we have fallen short of striving for justice for our LGBTQIA siblings, our black and indigenous siblings, our siblings who are people of color, our siblings who are immigrants, elderly, differently abled, and our siblings who do not have access to what they need for the abundant life promised to each of us by God. We accept the challenges that stand before us. We confess that we have not always extended Christ's welcome, and as a result, we have pushed away God's beloveds, named and claimed and called good from our spaces. From those who have been excluded by the church because of who they are and who they love, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those who experience systems of oppression due to the color of their skin, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those who do not have equal access to resources because of the way our government is structured, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those who do not see their identities represented in this church, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those whom we, the church, have called those people, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. The church is a place where we boldly proclaim and model welcome for each and every child of God. We share today proudly that people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions matter, that black, indigenous, and people of color matter, and that we as a church stand firmly against racism, homophobia, and transphobia. We seek forgiveness and commit to actions that will bring justice, equity, and healing to those who have been harmed. We do all these things through God's guidance and grace. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees up prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who frees the
Our first reading comes from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Lord, honored by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works, in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. The Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have been so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food that they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, one another What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you haven't seen Nanette yet on Netflix, you should. It's a stand-up performance by the comedian Hannah Gadsby. And although parts of it are funny, it's mostly thought-provoking, and you had better have a box of Kleenex close by if you're going to watch it. The first time I saw it, because I have seen it multiple times now, I was really struck by Hannah's story of her upbringing. She grew up in Tasmania, a little island off the coast of Australia. As she describes it, the conservative Bible Belt of that part of the world. Hannah grew up believing that it was wrong to be gay. Her whole life, she was raised to be homophobic. And so when she realized that she herself was gay, she said, it was too late. You can't just flip that switch off. She hated herself deeply because she had been raised to hate gay people. The demon of self-hatred has been cultivated within her, had been cultivated within her by people who thought they were abiding by God's law. Hannah should have heard the words God spoke to Jesus at his baptism, the words every parent should whisper into their child's ear every day. You are my beloved child, and I am well pleased with you. Instead, she was fed a steady diet of spiritual trauma. We do this all the time, of course. We find all kinds of ways to make our siblings feel inferior. Generations of white supremacist Christians have taken images of darkness and light in the Bible, images that were never meant to apply to skin color, and have applied them to the rainbow of hues that God has seen fit to bestow God's image bearers with pretending that God somehow favor, favors lighter-skinned people of European descent over darker-skinned people from all over the world. You can't just flip off that switch. Women are constantly confronted with photoshopped, sleek images of models that are only half real. And church communities often present the false ideal of the virgin mother and shame any woman who doesn't live up to it. You can't just flip off that switch. A world that loves to categorize everything holds mistrust for those who will not fit into boxes. And so anyone who is gender fluid or whose gender has had to change encounters discrimination and marginalization. You can't just flip off that switch. Our demons of self-hatred run deep. And there are plenty of others, of course. Unclean spirits and demons certainly exist in our places of worship. Perhaps you have been lied to in church. Perhaps you have been told you were less than, that something must have gone wrong when God created you. But Jesus demands that those demons be banished. Despite the church's penchant for shaming its people into submission, we find over and over that the message Jesus has for us is one of freedom from the unclean spirits that tell us we are unloved, that we don't matter. 
the spirits that tell us the world would be better off without us. And yes, those unclean spirits, those demons are everywhere. In the church, too. The church, built by humans as a way to help us live in community with one another and in communion with God, is still a human institution. The church, as a human institution, is still susceptible to our human instinct to treat our siblings as others and not as the beloved children of God we are. We cannot just flip that switch. But Jesus can. Jesus calls those demons out, and they obey him. Jesus calls not just one, but every demon out, exercising the self-loathing that twists us into knots, that convinces us we are undeserving of love, that tells us we have no place in this community. The man in the synagogue previously held captive by his demons is free. On this Reconciling in Christ Sunday, we celebrate the truth we know that God has called each of us beloved. And we recognize the challenges we still face in living into the beloved community. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, know this. No matter what you have faced, God has called you beloved, and nothing can change that. Amen.
guided by Christ, made known to the world in all its brilliant diversity. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God of creation, we give you thanks for the wonder of the world you have made and all that is in it. Inspire us in stewardship for the earth you have entrusted into our care, so that your justice may reign over all the earth, so that all might enjoy the abundance of your world. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of the vulnerable, you know what it is like to be cast out. Give us eyes to see you in the lives of those targeted by police violence, those kicked out of their homes because of who they are and who they love, those whose families have been destroyed by forced separations at our country's borders, and for all those whose lives have been pushed to the margins by our own fear. May your spirit fill us with the courage, conviction, and dedication to work for justice, knowing that when we do, we are, in fact, caring for you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of healing and comfort, each day brings fresh worry about the health of our family, friends, community, and nation. We remember that you can hold all we bring to you through prayer with sacred love. With hearts of joy and lament, we bring you the names and places of your people in need, especially Tom, Allison, Nathaniel, Claire, Karen, Ingrid, Mason, Emmy, Sarah, Julie, Carrie, Amelia, Adeline, Annalise, and all those we name now. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of the unknown, you are the beginning and the end. Be with us in this time of waiting and grant us patience in uncertainty. Open our hearts and minds to the new possibilities that surround us each day. Help us to remember that through your love we are made new with each sunrise and filled with your spirit in every breath. Give us space to listen and see what you are showing us. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of welcome, help us to see and love people we don't know yet, so we might continue to greet you in faith and be joyfully changed by who you are and all you have made, a world wild and wonderfully endless in its diversity. Bless this community of faith with challenges to grow us, care to wrap us up when we are wounded, and an abiding fire for the justice you are bringing. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unlimited capacity for love and mercy through your grace. Amen. In the name of the Creator, and of the Redeemer, and of the Holy Spirit, whom we invite into this space. Amen. As a church, we believe all are welcome. Let us name the ways we have fallen short of striving for justice for our LGBTQIA siblings, our black and indigenous siblings, our siblings who are people of color, our siblings who are immigrants, elderly, differently abled, and our siblings who do not have access to what they need for the abundant life promised to each of us by God. We accept the challenges that stand before us. We confess that we have not always extended Christ's welcome, and as a result, we have pushed away God's beloveds, named and claimed and called good from our spaces. From those who have been excluded by the church because of who they are and who they love, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those who experience systems of oppression due to the color of their skin, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those who do not have equal access to resources because of the way our government is structured, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those who do not see their identities represented in this church, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. From those whom we, the church, have called those people, we ask forgiveness and welcome you. The church is a place where we boldly proclaim and model welcome for each and every child of God. We share today proudly that people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions matter, that black, indigenous, and people of color matter, and that we as a church stand firmly against racism, homophobia, and transphobia. We seek forgiveness and commit to actions that will bring justice, 
equity, and healing to those who have been harmed. We do all these things through God's guidance and grace. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen.